All right, so we're here at the Royal Alberta Museum, uh, also known as the Ram. I'm most excited to see the fossils and stuff. Ashley, well, this is ironic. She doesn't like bugs, but she's most excited for the bug room. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we've never been here before, so kind of exciting. Uh, we had to pay for parking even though it's Sunday and they didn't accept coins even though there was a coin slot. That made no sense. You good? So, uh, I don't know. Anyways, we're here. This is so cool. I really like dinosaurs as well, and I actually made a made up dinosaur skull a while ago, and a dinosaur foot. Check out this cool mammoth and mammoth baby. Uh, I actually did a, a painting, not of a mammoth, but of a mastodon in an experimental series that I thought was pretty cool. This is in the lobby. It's pretty cool, the whole lobby here. I don't mean to be rude, but I'm pretty sure this security guard probably wouldn't be very effective. She's pretty old. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna head into the exhibits now. We're trying to guess what all this patterning is supposed to be. Like maybe some sort of historic trails or something. I don't know, something to do with the landmass. Can't figure it out. Doesn't say anywhere. First stop, Bug Gallery. Ashley's favorite. really warm in here. The first bugs here are fish. <laughs> I've, we used to have a fish tank. Oh, that's so cool. We used to have a fish tank that we were pretty proud of, but when we moved, we got rid of it. But I think we're gonna get another one in the future. Remember when we had shrimp in our tank? They ate all the algae and stuff. Yeah. It was awesome. This is salt water though, so it's different than ours, but still. That is weird. That's like a spiny starfish. That's neat. I definitely want to have another fish tank again after seeing this. <laughs> You guys think maybe this assassin bug is drunk off after eating all of those cricket slime juice? <laughs> Just read this real quick and you'll know what I'm talking about. This one is actually really menacing looking. Look how long his leg hairs are. So I used to have a tarantula a long time ago. I don't have it anymore because unfortunately he fell off of his climb and, and broke his skin open. So now I only have a snake, which actually doesn't like me having still, but. I'm getting more used to him. <laughs> she just said, I'm getting more used to him. She even uh, watched me feed him not too long ago. <laughs> Looking for these stick bugs is super easy. They're super easy to spot. There's tons of them in here. But the ones over here are incredibly hard to find. We just barely found one by accident because it moved. So he's right there. Kind of hard to see on video, but that's him. I love going on dates like this because it's full of uh, inspiring things, including this. 
wasp nests. We have a bunch of wasp nests on our property that have been abandoned and I've always wanted to do something with them. I may just take one and display it similar to this in my studio when I eventually have my shop all built up. We'll see though. Look at all these guys. African chafer beetles. I feel like Alex would make a joke about how they walk to avoid chafing. <laughs> I have one of these, and I we also collect shells. That's cool. That's the bug room done. I like I like bugs, which you might know because I make a bunch of bugs out of metal and other different assorted stuff. But actually, doesn't actually like bugs in real life. When we were in there, oh, this is a dead end. When we were in there, she's like, ooh, I'd feed those to my chickens. <laughs> but yeah, that was cool. Now we're gonna head off to another exhibit. Look, there's more of these weird holes in the wall. This one looks like it's shaped like some sort of landmass, so it must be like mountain ridges or something. I don't know. Walking into human history now. We got a big ass rock here. Um, okay, this looks like Cree. And uh, then there it is again. I think it's Cree. Maybe it's Blackfoot. I don't actually know what Cree looks like, even though I am. <laughs> There's a giant rock here that is buffalo turned to stone. So it's got to be like a, a legend or something. Uh, Samson Cree, that's really close. That's like a neighboring reserve to mine. Or actually, they're on the same reserve as mine. It's just a different band. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, this is where it originally was. And then it was donated here. It kind of looks like a buffalo, sort of. I mean, this one doesn't, but that one kind of has like an abstract shape of a buffalo, or a bison, I guess, would be more accurate. That's neat. I actually made a couple stone tools before, just to see what it would be like. Probably didn't make them uh, traditionally accurate, but man. This kind of stuff is fascinating. That's kind of cool. Is there stick men? When people say they can't even draw a stick man, they definitely can. This is so cool. They don't know what any of these objects were used for. And like how these ones, they were apparently broken into pieces thousands of years ago and that's why they're different colors because they age differently because of their size and where they were scattered and whatnot, but they all go together, which is so cool. Now those look more accurate. Apparently there's only, there's only four, right? That's what you said? In Alberta. What's the matter? Museum got your tongue? <laughs> got your nose? Yeah, I think so. Probably of a buffalo or a bison, I imagine, because there's one right here. Makes sense. We could make one of these. That'd be a good video, right? And get Hank pulling us, right? On dog sled. And Duke, and Duke yeah. And Shadow. Shadow. Shadow would be the lead. A lot of you know I'm looking for a truck currently. This one would do. It's really nice. I really like the older vehicles. The one I'm currently looking for is not this old and it's a little bigger, but this is a really nice truck. These two pictures here apparently were taken at my reserve, Ermanskin Cree Nation. These were during the, uh, wait, not the residential schools, no? Yeah, it's just Ermanskin Residential School in Muscogee. Okay, yeah, so Muskwichis is the name of, of uh, it means uh, Bear Hills, and it's basically four bands, 
and one of them is ermine skin and earlier you saw Samson I pointed that out at that buffalo rock thing uh, so these are from that school that was a terrible time residential schools um, yeah and you know what's crazy is Dakota actually worked on the modern ermine skin cremation school uh, a little while ago which that's kind of neat uh, it's no longer the situation that that this was but you know there's that connection there this is kind of a more modern twist on traditional Cree art sort of this one was done in 2001 kind of a neat piece this is the back of that same painting it's titled blood tears it's actually kind of sad if you read it all Yeah, so this painting here is by Alex uh, John Vier, and uh, yeah, it's entitled Blood Tears. Uh, he is part of the Indian group of seven artists, and uh, yeah, he, he has a, a pretty wicked story. You should look him up. And there's this painting, a little older, uh, a little more traditional, painted in 1894 by Many Mules. Um, Pretty cool actually. It's depicting a bison hunt. I guess they would probably call it a buffalo hunt, but we don't have buffalo in Canada. Um, here we have a cool Cree headdress. Looks similar to uh, one that I painted on Chief Two Moons, who was not Cree. This one actually belonged to Fine Day. This was for his first sun dance in 1895. That's pretty neat. Here's another painting done in 2015 by an artist named Mike Holden and it's uh, it says here it's wandering spirit a proud warrior and big bear a dis who is distraught after being unable to prevent violence and then of course it has the Canada flag behind it so there's some symbolism in there I like seeing other native artists work it's really cool because I kind of get to learn more about my culture and where I come from, which is when I paint uh, different native portraits, um, I try to do the same thing. I pick a subject and then uh, attempt to to learn about them. There's not a lot of information out there on some of the figures I've I've painted, but uh, there there is some. In fact, I've painted only two Cree figures. One being Chief Poundmaker, which who was recently exonerated of of treason, which is pretty good, but I also painted Chief Bobtail and then found out that I was related to him, which is pretty cool. So, in painting, doing my artwork, though it's way different than any traditional style or, or even the paintings here, because I just finger paint, I still get to learn about like who I am and where I come from, which is, I consider a privilege. Check this out. I kind of want to put a teepee on my property. This is, I think, a Blackfoot teepee. Cree didn't really put uh, like graphics on theirs, but man, that's cool. In fact, we can just find out right now. <laughs> Blackfoot teepee, yeah. I also need like a tractor for my property, but this might be a little old, and I'm pretty sure they wouldn't just give it to me. <laughs> that's kind of cool looking though. Going upstairs now, we were just in human history see what's up here. I think this is going to be natural history. Yes, it is. That's so cool. Which one? Pyrite? Pyrite? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like gold almost, but it looks like fake gold. Oh yeah, gold right there. It's just like gold leaf or something.
Which one's that? Eight, the green one. Ashley's is number eight. Pretty nice. But I'm April, so I'm a diamond. <laughs> Look at this quartz. Do you think that's natural? Like the way it has all those corners and stuff? That's so cool. All gold from where Roger lives. This is cool. Copper. Blobby green. Looks like it was boiled. Oh, that looks like a, like coral almost. Almost. Yeah. That's cool. This looks like it would be in a Conan the Barbarian movie, like Arnold Schwarzenegger era or Red Sonia or something. Looks like some sort of like crystal weapon. That's all for crystals. We think crystals are really cool, but we're not really into the crystal thing. We do collect some. I think we have some. We have a rock collection anyways that we like. We like cool rocks and whatnot. Ooh. What is that? Are those those got to be claws or something. We also like collecting fossils if we can find them. Check out this mammoth skull. Ashley actually found a mammoth tooth on the river one time. That kind of looked like that. Oh yeah. It's kind of in between. Yeah, it's definitely not that big. That would be cool if you found one that big. It's like it was a, bigger than those though. In Alberta, mammoth teeth are often found along rivers and creeks. The teeth have distinct surfaces like look like a bottom of a running shoe. So that's where we found it as well. Right? Yeah. And I think this is a mastodon. I could be wrong. It just seems to be smaller than the mammoth and have a different shaped skull. So this is like a mammoth tooth here. And then this is a mastodon tooth. Way different. Here's an authentic jawbone found in Alberta. Apparently this is the best specimen of a mastodon fossil found in Alberta. Pretty cool looking. Check out this bison. Look at those horns. Holy crap. Of course it's not real. That's just a casting or a plaster model. Same with all of these in here. The real fossils are like in behind glass and whatnot. But still cool to see the what they looked like. Oh what are these? That's a sloth? That's, That's a bear. bear. That's a sloth. I looked at the shadow here, the silhouette, and I was like, that's a sloth? It's even bigger than the freaking bear. This is a modern bear? No. Right. Oh, it's a short faced bear. I'm like, that's a really big ass bear. <laughs> that's a sloth. Imagine sloths were still that big. Were they super slow back then? I don't think they'd be. Yeah, I don't think they'd be on any tree from nowadays. Maybe in like the redwood forest or something like that. Or BC. <laughs> but there's no branches on those until like really high up. Check out those tusks. Fossils are the only legal ivory allowed in North America now to be used anyways. You're allowed to possess it, but you can't sell it or trade it. You can just have it. I saw this bird and I was like, what is that? A turkey and Ashley was like, it looks kind of like a vulture. And it's a turkey vulture. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently they're here in Alberta. I've never seen one though. All these birds look the same, but they're all different. That's weird. Also got a raven in here, which I think they're so cool looking. You're also not allowed to own any taxidermy or even feathers of ravens for whatever reason. I'm not sure exactly why. Or crows or whatever else is in that bird family. Lots of birds actually not allowed to have any of their feathers or anything like that. Um, unless you're like First Nations or a facility like this. I'm not sure why they're protected like that, but they are. Same goes for eagles and hawks. I could be wrong, so don't quote me, but for whatever reason, they're protected in such a way that you can't even have their feathers unless you're First Nations or like a research facility or a museum or something like that. Odd. Maybe one of you knows why. I don't know. Maybe I should just do my own research. Look at this. These two racks got hooked up on these deer and they probably died stuck together. I mean, I guess that's what they're showing here. 
That's pretty nuts. I also like to make stuff out of antlers and stuff when I can find sheds. I actually had a dream last night that we were getting chased by a bear. Yeah, it scared the crap out of me. Those are the weird types of nightmares I have. They're not like monsters, they're just real things. For a second I thought that was life size. I was like, that's not real. But no, it's not real. It's just scaled up so you can kind of see what it's all about. It's kind of like the same scale that I build my bugs at. I got a few Canadians locked up in this display. Tried to touch one of these when I was in LA on the pier. Couldn't do it. I wanted to do it because Chakota like grabbed the tail of one of them. We used to get moose in our yard all the time. Last year we had a mama and a baby that came by all the time and for whatever reason, now they don't, they don't come around anymore. Look at this. That's so cool. It's probably not real because you can touch it. Yeah, that's like a plaster or something. I also made a dinosaur skull, not based off of any real dinosaur, but it's still cool. Here's some turtles from Southern Alberta. Pretty cool. Remember when I made those Sheldons? Different type of turtle, but still cool. Over here, there's some ducks, different species of ducks. We were actually thinking about getting some ducks, maybe. Not sure just yet. The golden eagle, pretty cool. We actually, when we moved into our, when we actually, no, the first, First day that we went to our house, we had two bald eagles fly over our house, which is pretty cool. And Ashley saw a bald eagle beside the road eating something the other day. They're kind of rare around us, but they are around. You got Vincent's brother hanging out with this grizzly bear and this deer and wolf. Imagine squirrels actually made their houses like that. They just have like a door that <laughs> creaks open. Oh man, check out these huge ass holes. Remember that tree that I found with that big hole in it and I didn't know what it was? Maybe it was a woodpecker, but it seemed really low, so I wasn't sure. All right, we just checked out the, the new ram. Look, right there it says ram. Uh, I'm not sure why it's so big, because it seems like it has the same amount of stuff as the old museum, but I could be wrong. There was lots of cool stuff that we hadn't seen before. They switched out some of the exhibits. Some of the exhibits were closed, because it's a Sunday, I guess. It was pretty cool. Lots of inspiration, a lot of ideas for upcoming projects and whatnot. And it was a good date, so bonus for the inspiration. The date was intentional. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to show you some of the stuff that we've collected um, based off of what you've seen here. Alright, what's up guys? Back from the museum and I'm going to show you what I think that I have collected or we have collected that's a museum-esque. And right here I have three uh, boxes that I made from driftwood that I got from BC. We'll start with this one. It's the smallest one. And this one holds my seashells. Uh, I couldn't find everything, but this holds a few of the pieces that I thought were cool. So, I mean, I have a, a crab thing another one I just like the look of them and I like how even though like it no longer is on the crab body it can still move it still hinges and stuff and a lot of these I just thought were were neat looking I like how these shells they like, turn color this used to be a lot more brilliant but for some reason it hasn't stood the test of time Oh no, I had this crab shell for a long time, but it broke. Damn it. They get very fragile. I have a few more, but again, I have no idea where they are. This is the seashell collection of the small box. Pretty small, but I kept these for one reason or another, and I don't exactly remember why, but I do like the look of them. The box itself is just made out of a piece of 4x4 that I found that I hollowed out and then I did a sort of primitive wood burning on the inside to kind of look like it may have been done a long time ago. I actually have the same engraving here on my table 
kind of goes up there. And there's a little ship in here. It's hard to see now because this has seen so much use. It used to be a lot more prominent. The second box, this one here is a piece of driftwood that I actually was going to use for the base of a sculpture, but instead I uh, tested out my bandsaw for the first time on it and then hollowed it out and decided to gift this to Ashley for her collection of sea glass. So Ashley always wanted some sea glass and I had a job out near the ocean and so I grabbed her a small handful of what I could find and they were mostly white. That's why we have a lot of white. Then when we went back to the island there, uh, we usually camp over at French Beach. Anyways, we went and hunted for more glass and there was a one time that we couldn't find very many, especially no big pieces, but we did find this blue piece and even though it didn't see too much wear in the ocean, we picked it anyways just because we wanted to have a win for that day when it came to hunting for sea glass. On another walk, I remember, we went to another beach, we didn't find anything except for this one piece once we gave up. I'm not sure why we have so much so much trouble finding sea glass because a lot of people go hunting for sea glass around that area, but we never have very good luck. We found this piece of, uh, I think it's aluminum, but I'm not sure. It's very lightweight metal. And we keep that in here because that's where it was. This piece here, this is kind of cool. It's just the mouth of a bottle, of a beer bottle, I think. Could be a, a soda bottle too for maybe a root beer or something like that. But anyways, I took this just because uh, the cool shape. This here is the biggest piece we've ever found that has like the nice wear on it. The box itself, you can see the bandsaw marks on it. The bandsaw wasn't very good. I still have it, but I don't use it very often because it's not very good. But the box closes with these magnets on the lid and it's a uh, yeah it's a pretty cool box now moving on to the third box this one's my favorite made it out of uh, a stump that I pulled out off the beach thought it was pretty cool I thought it'd be perfect for a lid hauling it out a little bit we're gonna go back into our shell collection I got this conch. This is actually Ashley's that she's had for years. This, uh, I don't know, sea urchin thing. Not exactly sure what those are called. We got a starfish. I was always jealous of these. I've always wanted a starfish. And we also have a sand dollar. All of these things uh, are from Ashley. So I've always wanted to find a conch on the beach, but like one of those huge ones, no luck just yet. I found plenty for sale, but I've always wanted to just find one. I haven't found any starfish either, but I would like to find one. I've never hunted for any. Or these, I think these are sea urchins. Could be wrong, I don't know. I'm not a marine person. Now sand dollars, I'm not sure where sand dollars live. I'm not sure if they're tropical or if they're in Canada or anything like that, but these animals are so cool when they're uh, dead. <laughs> I'm moving on. I'm not very consistent on how I uh, store these things, but we're going to go back to rocks for a second. I have a few rocks in here. These ones are full of barnacles, which I thought was, was pretty neat. And then I also have some petrified wood, which is kind of like a rock, I guess. The minerals that are replacing the wood are really hard. And I have two pieces of petrified wood and then I have this piece that I thought was petrified wood, but it's actually still soft. It just has the look. So I kept that one because I thought it was I thought it was pretty cool. Then if I reach back in here, I can get this one rock which is one of my favorites. I went to uh, LA to visit my brother Ken and he suggested one day that we go hunting for fossils so we go there and the first rock that I pick up was this one which seems to have an imprint of either a feather or a leaf and I thought it was pretty neat especially since it was like the very first rock I picked up so these rocks here have all these barnacle-y things 
stuck to it. So that's why I picked these up. Thought they were really neat. This piece here, I've had for a really long time. And then this one here, uh, I found while walking with Ashley at our old place in the farmer's field, there's a road that goes through the farmer's field. And this was just on the side of the road. And I was like, I think that's a piece of petrified wood. And it is. And then this piece, like I was saying, it looks like petrified wood, but it's, it's soft. This would still float if put in water. This is my first uh, fossil that I've owned. I mean, I don't know the definition of fossil exactly. This is an imprint, I think, of either a feather or a leaf. And it's the first one that I found in my life that I can recall. Really cool. Okay. All right. Now, talking about fossils, I also have this piece here. And this is a piece of woolly mammoth tusk. I got as a gift from a guy who I gifted first a painting and he decided well I'm going to give you this now this is probably the most anticipated is this mammoth tooth that Ashley found I actually picked this up because Hank was chewing on it and you can see right here he actually got a chunk off um, and the reason why he was able to bite into it and chop it off is because uh, Teeth and tusks don't always fossilize like bones do because they have enamel on them and the enamel protects them from the elements. So this is still bone. Although I have no idea what I'm talking about. But you can do the lick test. If you think you have a fossil or a bone or whatever, you can just stick your tongue to it. If your tongue sticks to it, it's bone. And if I stick my tongue to this, which I did, it sticks to it bone which is really cool so Ashley found this because Hank chewed on it and then she picked it up and was like oh this is a neat looking stick and then she's like but it's really heavy this might be a rock she brought it to me and uh, I was just chilling by the river there and uh, I was like oh that's a mammoth tooth and the reason why I knew it was a mammoth tooth well one it kind of looks like a tooth with the root here but also because uh, I know what an elephant tooth looks like and it's very similar to this. Now earlier we also saw a mastodon tooth which has like the big triangle pokies that stick up. I'm using real, uh, <laughs> I'm using real uh, scientific terms here. But uh, they, they look a lot different. So if I would have seen that, I probably wouldn't have guessed what it was but since the mammoth tooth looks very similar to an elephant tooth I just I just thought it was a mammoth tooth now I also have a shark tooth somewhere but I can't find it but I did however acquire this piece which is a jaw of some sort of shark I'm not sure what kind but a small one anyways not one I would want to mess with because that mouth could rip my whole face off but still cool nonetheless. I wish I could have found the shark tooth that I have. It's pretty big, but I couldn't find it. I also said that I had a crystal collection and I couldn't find most of those either, but I did find this slice of something. I'm not sure what this is, but I don't know much about crystals. I just think they look cool. So we have this piece. Um, we have some more somewhere, but we still haven't unpacked our belongings, so I'm not sure where it is. This collection has no rhyme or reason as to why it's in this box. It just all happens to fit. This is my favorite box out of all of them. I found the top just buried in the beach in the sand. I thought it looked cool. I thought it would be perfect for a lid. So I then made the box out of scrap wood and scrap steel. All this stuff seems to fit in it nicely. So that's where it goes. This, even though it's a fossil, it wasn't found in Alberta, so I could sell this if I wanted to. I'm not going to, but I could. This, however, since it was found in Alberta on the North Saskatchewan River, uh, out by Tomahawk, if you know where that is, I cannot sell this. I also cannot intentionally destroy it because it is protected by the crown. 
So uh, the museum wants to have this in their collection at some point, but they said we could keep it for as long as we wanted to, as long as we don't sell it or destroy it. Uh, the crystal thing, does anyone know what this is? I have no idea. It's a tiny slice of it. I thought it was cool, and that's why I have it. And then, of course, all the other things. The shark mouth. Does anyone know what kind of shark this is? The teeth are still really sharp. I'm not sure what it is. It would be cool if one day my stuff was worthy to be in a museum. That would be neat. This lock here was like 70 bucks, I think, the guy wanted for it. But it was the only lock I could find to lock this chest up with. Eventually I would like to make a, a display of some sort for this tooth, but for now I just wrap it up and then place it in here carefully. I may as well put the jaw in there if it fits. Close the lid and then display it on my shelf o stuff. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed coming on our little date and the show and tell. Always remember to kick ass with bull's feet and be excellent. Peace.